Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly Factorio space exploration update. And as you can see by this ship here, there's been some um, major changes during the last stream. But for now I'm going to touch on some other things that I've been doing. So I've been trying to get all of the in, enough science done to get get onto the end real real end game end, end of the game. But if we look over here, we'll see there's a bit of a problem. We've stopped producing the Deep Space Science 4, and we've stopped producing those because we stopped producing Deep Space Science 3, and we stopped making those because we've run out of significant data. These um, the yellow, goldy yellow memory cards are going up here. And if we trace this back down to here, we'll see. Uh, is it here? Yes, it is here. We'll see. That the problem is that this belt has filled up and, and and jammed with the um with the with the good data cards, and the reason that that's jammed um is that down here the duff data the data cards that need reformatting have backed up all the way along here because the station that takes them away is is completely full. Here it is here, and so that means everything is jammed up, everything is ground to a halt, and things just aren't working. So, in the, in the sort of traditional Factorio way, we're going to trace this problem back and back and back up the chain until we find out what's going on. And we see that over here, well, it's, it's cleared up a little bit now, so this has started running again. But when I looked a minute ago, it turned out it was because all of these chests up here were full. And so there wasn't anywhere to put the, black, the data cards that needed to be reformatted, so everything just backs up and up and up. And there are, and there are problems, basically. We've obviously had a train come in here and pick some of these up, which means another one can then go and pick up some of the blank data cards and bring them over here to be reformatted. But that's still not going to solve the problem because there's still going to be a lot of um, a lot of the data cards over here in the um, yeah, in fact, in this in the station, the one it was more or less looking at. Um, this is going to be more than full, and so we're going to have we're going to have some problems. Now, as you can see, we are pulling we're pulling the data cards through reasonably quickly here. But it's just not enough for the rate that the um, that they're being created at. So there's a big backlog of them coming along here. Then it's, it's even worse when we start to look up here because there's more, lots and lots of different areas of science feeding onto the same belt. So the me mechanical science grinds to a halt completely because this is completely full, and this is full because it's trying to cram onto the side of the belt here, where all the all the de duff data, all the blank data cards from um, biological and deep space science are pouring down. So. It's it's a problem. I need to get a bit more throughput going through, but the, re the but it's got to the point now where the reason it stopped is that there are too many of the good blank data cards, which is a bit crazy because I've had so many problems with not having enough of them in the past. But I guess that's the way Factorio goes. So what I'll probably end up doing is putting another um, putting a warehouse on the other side of here for them to be dumped into. So there's a lot more storage space, and then telling all of these machines that are making them um, that are actually sorry these machines that are actually making them new. To stop making them if there's if there's any if there's if there's a huge number over here. So we'll just we'll just use the um, just reuse the ones that are um, uh, just re try and keep them recirculating, but have an emergency for topping them emergency systems for topping them up if necessary. Now at the moment that's not happening because I'm not sure, quite sure why. Oh oh okay there is a, there we've already got that system for stopping them going in. So if there's more than if there's only if there's less than eight thousand then it'll feed the blank ones through. But if if not then it won't. So we since we've got 13,000 here at the moment, we're okay. So if I put in that warehouse I was talking about, then we'll have a quite a nice buffer over here to keep those in. So I'll do that next time. <clears throat> okay, so that's been causing quite a lot of problems with the science doings, uh, which is a shame because I kind of need to get Factory Spaceship 6 done because, yes, I've been building up this ship, and this is eventually going to be my victory ship. So I did a little bit of testing in previous episodes with the um, the ship that I called the Jellyfish. In fact, that's out in deep space at the moment. Let's go and find it. Uh, this one. This is my um, deep space transport interstellar whatever science data gathering ship. Um, and this one with these engines, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine engines across the back of it, is capable of speeds of 161.48. So I thought, okay, I'll double the number. I'll double the number of engines, or maybe slightly more than over here. So we've got the nine in this V, and then one, two, three, four, five on either side. So we've got we've got 19 now. So slightly more than twice as many. But unfortunately, that wasn't enough to get double the speed out of it. Um, does this know about? This doesn't know about its um, previous maximum speeds. I thought it told you somewhere in here what the maximum speed the ship had achieved was, but it doesn't seem to. Anyway, as long story so short, with these extra engines, it was able to get up to about um, two, two, uh, 200 speed, which is not enough because I needed to be able to do 250 in order to win the game. <clears throat> so, in order to win the get to get the spaceship victory, you need to have a spaceship that will fly with one of these things on it. Um, 
for 10 minutes. Now let's, have, let's have a look in here. You need to have a spaceship that will travel at 250 speed for 10 minutes whilst running a, um, a Nexus with, in distortion drive mode. Now the distortion drive mode, I've been told... Oh, here we go. Yes, the distortion drive uses 6 gigawatts, which is why there's this an enormous array of um, power generating systems. Um, so each of these produces half a gigawatt. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then a seventh one to power the engines and other miscellaneous stuff on the ship. Then those feed the so those those take heat out. They feed the steam into these, and each of these will produce one gigawatt. So we've got we've actually got eight of these. So we've got more than we needed, but this way it's a nice pleasing symmetry. So I'm gonna gonna stick with that. I'm not gonna take one of them out just for the sake of it. And then of course all of the condenser turbines to deal with the cool steam that comes out of here. And then water pipes all over the place to take water away from them. And now the new thing we've got in the middle here is these um, antimatter reactors because I did consider trying to run the ship off the big um, heat. Uh, off, off the big thermal batteries, the, the beam receivers, but I decided that I'm not convinced enough about how much heat they can store to be sure, sure that I'll be able to get this to work. So I thought we'll go with for antimatter reactors instead. I've got these up to operating temperature, as you can see they're at 9400 degrees C, and that means so are these, and these could potentially produce heat, but they're not, but we're not running, but at the moment the ship is presumably plugged in somewhere to the, and it's not actually plugged into the, um, the surrounding areas, but it's just not using any power, very much power because we're we're using like two megawatts out of the eight gigawatts it's capable of producing, so it's it's peanuts. I don't really care. I mean, I could turn all the shields off to save two megawatts, but as I say, I don't, don't really care. Or I suppose actually more sensibly plug into the into, into these and get that get that get it running off the base off the uh, space station's power systems. So yes, this ship is capable of scraping together enough power to run this this um, this thing in ludicrously greedy mode. And also, it's got enough engines to run at two, a speed of about 200. Now, the um, the sharp-eared among you will have observed that 200 is not 250. So it turns out that this many engines is actually not enough. And I'm going to need to put even more of them on. So I'm going to need to extend this out a bit further, or possibly put in some higher up, some extra wings up at the top with engines on the bottom of it. I don't really like the idea of putting in extra engines coming off wings at the top, because then they'll be firing towards the bottom area of the ship. And I feel like that's just bad ship design and also you lose a certain amount of um, engine efficiency if there isn't a clear view behind it. There is also an engine missing down here in this corner um, because a rock managed to get sneak past the um, this, this shield here, as you can see it doesn't actually quite extend out far enough, and clobbered the, en the engine off the end. This one got away way luckily without being clobbered, but a rock, yeah, so a rock came through here, ran the gauntlets of the lasers and just smashed the engine off the side of it. So. <clears throat> the next version is going to need a bit more um, protection as well. But this is this was very much an experiment. It was, let's get all of the energy tr uh, production systems in here, make sure that the ship basically works, see how fast it'll go, and then see what improvements need to be made from there. So as a sort of a proof of concept, it worked quite nicely. Now the interesting thing about this, if we, if we do the whole integrity check, you'll see that we're... Um, well, we've lost an engine, so it's gone down a little bit, but um, we've got 3430 out of 3500, which is why there's this massive block of spaceship wall up here to give me, to basically to reduce the amount of hull stress on the spaceship by putting a massive lump of bit that doesn't count as spaceship inside it. You can bring this integrity, the hull stress down by quite a bit. And that was the only way I could get it down below 3500. But there's no way I'm going to be able to keep it below 3500 and put all of the extra engines I want on here. So this is why I'm trying to do an additional factory spaceship research to get me another 500 um, available stress in order to make the ship that bit bigger and, you know, actually work. The other thing that's worrying me quite a lot about this ship at the moment is whether I'm going to be able to get water round, round through the ship fast enough to, um, to keep everything satisfied. So we've got, we've got these water tanks at the top up here that are storing a buffer to allow it to be sort of, to allow everything to be topped up as the water gets very gradually used. We've got water being pulled out here into these pipes and then so essentially the cycle is the water goes into these heat exchangers uh, then it goes into the turbines then it, uh, some of it gets turned back into water at this point and then the rest of it goes into these turbines and gets back turned back into water in those so it needs to flow all the way from here around here and back up here to go into these turbines in order to be turned back into steam again and I'm not sure we're going to have the throughput in the pipes in order for that to work properly so I am quite worried about this, about actually about the water flow. I may, I may be able to squeeze in another pipe around the top here and link it into these tanks, because that is then linked straight into into here. But then there's a shield generator in the way of that, and um, yeah, it's it's it, it's it's a bit tricky. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be okay. Maybe I'll put in, I'll put I can put in a lot of pumps around the bottom here to just keep the water being pushed around this way and see if that helps at all. 
but in general it's going to it's going to be a bit tricky i just i just hope it's going to work because if not they, i haven't left an enormous amount of space for um for extra extra pumping areas or extra pipes to be run um and there's and it's difficult running the pipes through around the bottom here because there's quite a lot of other stuff going I think I might also need some more antimatter uh, uh, and, and more of these antimatter tanks. I'm, I'm not sure. We went out for a brief flight and used about 0.3 of an anti, uh, no, th about 300 antimatter from each tank. So it's going quite a long way. But if I have to fly for 10 minutes, well, it might, it might not be enough. We'll have to, we'll have to see how it goes. But again, I think some experimentation required. And if it turns out this isn't enough, then I'll find a way to switch some more, um, some more of these booster tanks in there, just, just to make sure it's okay. So, yes, this is all very experimental. I, I know I can't finish it until this research is done, but it's going in the right direction. So, reasonably happy with that, with the, with the spaceship. It just needs just needs a bit more work. All of this extra research has put quite a load on the Naquium production. So, we've got, at the moment, w w w what's going on here? Well, we've got one of the big ships that come from, that's come from Realm of Shadows unloading. So, we've got a nice, nice supply of it here. These warehouses are completely full. These are almost completely empty. So... Plenty of room for this one to unload, well, a decent amount of room for this one to unload into, especially as this one's filling up at the same time. It's also unloading some Naquim, which is bringing this up to, this is now at 3,000, so it was at about just over 1,000 just before I started recording, so we've had a good supply of Naquim come out from there. So, Naquim seems to be, it seems to be holding on, but it is, struggling is slightly too hard a word, harsher word, because we haven't actually run out yet. But I feel like we're getting through it pretty quickly now that, all the, now that the science has kicked back in again. And once we get science running properly, and properly, then we're going to have a lot more Naquim being used as well. So I think Naquim is a concern, but not a crisis. We've got, if we look out in space, we can see that the, uh, the Naquim ships will probably be flying around as... I can't actually see any of them from here. Maybe there's... No, I don't know where they are. Well, there's one parked in Novus Orbit. There's one parked... There's going to be one parked on Tulip. Yes, there it is. I don't know where the third one is. Maybe it's queued up, ready, waiting to go into Novus Orbit there, and I just can't see it because there's all this writing there. Um, the big ones, there's one in Novus Orbit, as we saw. There's one on its way back over to Realm of Shadows, and hopefully there's one in Realm of Shadows. Yes, there's one in Realm of Shadows filling up. So there's three of them. They're all reasonably well spread out. At the moment, I think that's going okay. If Naquim does become a problem at all, then I have made quite a lot of the um, tier 6 modules that need to go into the um, into the Naquim processing system. So up here, we, if we look in this this box here, we see that we're now on, actually we're now running up to 199 of them because I did nick quite a few in order to make some tier 8 if productivity modules in order to put them in a second science lab over here. So we now have two science labs working, which means things are things with science will happen a bit quicker when there's an actual supply of the resources for it. So, maybe that was a bad idea, I don't know. It did take about 100, um, 100 tier 6s to make the, uh, the, the those 7 tier 9s, tier 8s though, which has um, put a bit of a, a, um, a drop on, on this. But these are still working as fast as the tier 5s come through. Down the bottom here we are still making, still making the modules as fast as we re reasonably can. It's just that it's such a slow process making such high tier modules that well it's just all taking rather a long time so we'll leave that running and we'll eventually we'll probably go down and, and upgrade and do, do some upgrades and make things work a little bit better i did a dirty dirty balance um that's not the button i meant to press i'm press you not i a di dirty dirty overflow system for the stone or here on norvis so we had a problem that you may you may well remember where there was insufficient stone in the um sorry there was too much stone in these in these warehouses and it was causing everything else around here to back up horribly and we weren't getting any iron through we weren't getting any coal through just everything everything was broken because of it so what I did in order to get around that was I put in this up here, which takes a low priority. So if this belt is completely full and backed up, then it will at low priority take the stone off this belt and feed it into these warehouses up here as a buffer. Then if the, where, if it, if the stone ever drops low, then it'll come back out here at a lower priority and be put onto this belt. So if there's ever... If there's ever any available space, the stone will pour out of here. But if there isn't, it will pour. If, if it's jam-packed, it will pour into here to give me an additional buffer. What's quite interesting is I notice that the stone is no longer in a crazy, crazy surplus. We seem to actually have. I'm not going to say a short. I am going to say a shortage of it. We have. We actually have a shortage of stone. My God, where's all that gone? Maybe that's gone into um, into glass to be turned into um, to be turned into naquium. Um, uh, via the um, vitalic acid yeah because we've got a lot of glass coming through here so that's my guess my suspicion is that suddenly we've, we've now that we're producing naquium at a hell of a rate we've started having massive demands on the stone and so the problem that i had a little while ago in, uh, during the session has completely solved itself 
and yeah we now we now have we are using up the stone as fast as it's coming in which is quite impressive we're down to about 20,000 here that means, means a train might be about to turn up that's amazing we've got quite a lot in here and quite a lot coming through here that's being gradually fed up into it so we are we are replenishing the stone supply at a solid blue belt from from the supplies that come from other other planets so we've got quite a lot down here we've got in fact, how much have we, how much have we got got another we've got we do have 32,000 stone in total um, of which 20,000 yeah 22,000 is in here so that means Hang on, these aren't linked it. These aren't linked up to it as well. So I don't know how much I don't know how much stone we have. There's twenty five thousand in each of these, so that's that that that's a lot. Um, yeah, we have we have more stone. We we do have quite a lot of stone here. It's just a case of bringing it up here. So maybe I need maybe I need to put in another belt and try and feed it in up here somehow. But this is all going. This is getting more and more horrible. The more nonsense and stuff I try and cram in. So this is all a bit difficult. Um, but we are currently feeding. A, a blue belt of stone into here so I think we may be all right for that we just need it's just a sort of a, a getting it to the places where it's needed and if you look at this there's 24,000 in here at the moment and a train hasn't come and that means we don't have a stone crisis we just have it's just yeah a little bit awkward <laughs> so looking at the other ones we've got 148 iron so that one's good we've got 12 only 12,000 copper that's interesting there's probably quite a lot no there isn't any in these in these um, hmm. Okay, so copper is a bit of a problem, but we do have the gear off and ships that should be bringing that over. I think we just have a throughput problem down here where I need to start doing taking the copper out separately. I, I don't, I don't know what I need to do, but I need to fiddle with that. Coal got twenty three thousand, so that's just okay. All right, so things are ticking over here. It's mostly all right. I probably don't need to do much fiddling with this. We'll, we shall, we shall see how it goes. <laughs> I also fixed the um, the balance of the red circuits because we had a thing over here where um, because of the positioning of these um, module uh, beacons, it's beaconing this side significantly more than it's beaconing this side. I think I talked about this last time. So I came along here, I put in these splitters here, here, and here in order to balance the red red circuits that are coming out from from all of these so to get an even number being loaded into the trains. And well, there's still a little bit of nonsense going on. Let's send this train away now. Let's go. Um, we can sort of gradually fix it because by um, just letting trains come in and, and load up as they will. Um, or by letting this station fill up completely. But uh, that seems unlikely to happen at the rate we're getting through red circuits at the moment. So, yes, that's been the last stream. Um, most of, I spent quite a lot of it building up the... Um, building up the victory ship and also dealing with this the stone problems down here that now seem to have just solved themselves which is interesting um I, and i went around and fiddled with a few other things as well but those are those are the main points that i've been get, getting on with recently so yeah this ship here is eventually going to allow me to go out and get the spaceship victory once that's happened i'm going to call that the end of the game um, as far as I'm concerned, because I don't really want to, I don't want to carry on with the um, the what I've been calling the Indiana Jones victory, where you go off and do the um, do the archaeological stuff, because space exploration 0.6 has come out, and I'm kind of excited to play that, but I'm not prepared to switch my SE 0.5 game over to 0.6. It's gonna it's gonna need to be a complete restart because there's been so many changes. So what? So the plan is once I've once I've got the spaceship victory, which I'm hoping will happen in the next stream, but we'll we'll see. It's um. <laughs> it may be slightly further out than that. But once that's done, um, I'm going to start a K2 and SE 0.6 run. And I'm going to do that with some friends because I know that K2 is going to be is going to make the whole thing rather big and complicated. So that's going to start sometime in August, I expect. Uh, we're going to start that as a four-player, I think I think, it's, I think it's four of us, um, four-player K2 SE run where we'll yeah we'll, we'll try and go for the whole the full victories, both the spaceship and the archaeological, and just get everything done. So I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be very interesting to see all the differences um, and how much how much K2 changes things around. So yeah, looking forward to that. So definitely come along for those. That does mean the Factorio streams will be moving to Monday because that's my current multiplayer stream slot, at least in theory. I've also been playing a bit of um, The Last Starship, which is a new game that Introversion Software have been working on. It's very, very early access at the moment, so it's a bit shy on features because, you know, early access is what it means. Um, but I'm, but it's but it's supposed to be getting updates from time to time, so I'm, I'm going to be making videos about that as I, as I uh, progress, as, as the game progresses and as I can do more and more interesting things in it. So I've got the first one of those as, uh, came out uh, on Friday, so check that out if you haven't already. And I've sort of, the Minecraft streams and things have sort of gone a little bit by the wayside because I think the other things are a bit more interesting. So Minecraft is probably going to be gradually phased out. 
but the but until then there'll be the various videos and things coming out here and there finally there is of course going to be the gta videos those will come out every so often um uh, I'm aiming for one a week with those, but they're so time-consuming to make that that hasn't really been the case recently. But they'll they'll come out as and when. So lots lots on the channel to watch out for. Thanks for hang thanks for uh, coming along to the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. There we go. All fixed.